Okay, in this tutorial we're going to do the last of the uh, fire and particle effects and we're going to be using a super spray particle emitter for this. Um, I'm going to attempt to drag out the emitter and get the settings right. So I'm going to be winging it a little bit because there's a lot of settings. Um, what I'm going to do is set up the scene real quick. I'm going to use a plane here that my little emitter is going to sit on. Um, I've also got a light in the scene I forgot to get rid of here. Just a second and I will get rid of it. Um, unhide by name, this one, and we want that light gone. Okay. And color that brown. Okay, and we're ready to get our emitter in here. I'm looking for this particle systems. It's under the create menu. Whoops, wrong one. Particle systems. I'm looking for super spray, and I'm just going to click into my viewport and drag it out. It looks like a little arrow. You can see it here. This is the gizmo, so it looks like a little arrow with kind of a directional box around it. And if I move my slider, you'll see that it actually is shooting some particles, but they're not really doing much. If I was to render this right now, you're not going to see anything. So I'm going to move my slider, by the way, over here to frame 10 so that I can see a little bit of what's going on. Actually, frame 20 will work a little better. A little bit of what's going on with these particles. Now, we've got to get over here to the super spray emitter, and we've got to change a lot of things. There's a lot to this uh, super spray emitter. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the spread and the, uh, the spread, sorry, <laughs> spread there, and this is the spread. Can you see how that's changing in two directions here? I'm going to change it in both directions about equally. I don't want it flying all over the place. I want a fairly tight little stream here. So I'm going to make the spread pretty tight. I'm just going to work my way through this, this um, menu little by little. The percentage I'm going to change to 70%. That's going to make a whole lot more particles. Moving down under particle generation. I'm going to change the life, which right now is ending at frame 30. You can see they get cut off at frame 30. There's the 30 under life. I'm going to make them get cut off at frame 70 now. So they're going to keep going up until, oops, emitter, sorry, frame 70. I got that wrong. I'm going to give their life 20. That means they only live once they're spawned for 20 frames. But I want the emitter to keep going until frame 70. And eh, that's still not going to do it. Their life's going to need to be longer. I'm going to make their life 80 in this case. So there they go. So they keep going. And again, the life is 80. The emitter stop is 70. You can see that it's never going to be the same for these particles. You're going to have to redo them for every scene because it really depends on what's in your scene and what kind of timing you're looking for. I'm going to bump up the variation to 50, and what that means is that all of these items here now are getting varied, so we get a little bit more realistic um, outcome. I'm also moving my animation bar over so that I can see the results as I put them in. I'm going to move down here to size. I'm, I know I need the size to be bigger. You can see now if we render it, they actually are there. If I make the size really large, you can see them. They look like little pieces of confetti right now. I'm going to knock the size back down to 5 for the time being. I want the variation to be, I don't know, 40%. That's a variation of size. I want them to grow for 20 frames. That's going to keep the bottom tighter. And I want them to fade for 30 frames. That's going to make the top a little bit more feathered. And you can see again if we render them, you can see them there. They're just rendered very small right now. And I haven't picked the type yet. That's what I'm going to do now. I want them to be instance geometry. But we're going to look at this meta particles really quick. Meta particles you can do water effects with. It'll take a second to render here. But you'll see what meta particles do. 
and they will come up in a second. I'm not sure if the size will work for them or not. Let's see. And it's coming. Metaparticles take a while. What it's going to do is it's going to do a blobby effect. So it's actually kind of making a little blob for each particle. Well, those are too small. Let me bump up the size quite a bit here and see if we can get those to render again. It, they're basically meta blobs, so they stick together. And Max is figuring out a little blob for each particle. And wherever they stick together, it kind of goos them together. And it makes really good uh, water or lava type effects, if I can get it to render here. But it is dependent on the size. If they're too small, well, those are still a little too small. I'm going to bump it up to 50. Give it one more try here. There we go. That's what I was after. You can see that it kind of makes a gooey effect. Let's try a little bit bigger. And that will simulate water if you were to put a water surface shader on top of that. That's not what I want for mine. That's just to show you. I'm going to pick Instance Geometry. And in my scene, I already have a little sphere. This sphere, if I go to this guy here, this sphere isn't anything special. It has a ton of segments, so I'm going to ramp the segments way down because it doesn't need to be um, uh, a lot of segments to it. You can see the radius is pretty small. The sphere will work for me. I'm going to go back to my particles. And under Instant Geometry, some of this area will be grayed out. We want to go down here where it says Pick Object. And I'm going to click on that and pick on my little sphere. And now, when I render this, I end up with a whole lot of spheres. But actually, that's too big because I still had it set for my blobs. I'm going to go back down to 5. And that's what we're looking for. You can see now that every little particle has been changed into a sphere. Um, I'm going to move this a little bit farther along. I'm going to move the size down a little bit more. I'm looking for a little bit more space in there. That's probably going to work a little bit better. Now, that sphere that I just used doesn't have any surface on it. You can see that if I drag something else over to the particles and render them, that it applies it to the sphere. So if I change anything in my maps, like I'll put a checkerboard pattern on it, now that checkerboard pattern has been applied to my particles. So we can use this to our advantage. This is what I'm after, is a shader that looks something like this. I'm going to make it over here from scratch so you can see how I do that. I know that I want it to be luminous, so I'm going to bump the lumination up. You can see that it's completely luminous. If you want, you can bump it down a little bit. It does look kind of good with a little bit of shading on it. I'm going to go under Maps. And under Diffuse Color, I'm going to pick Noise. You could pick really anything that's a noise type procedural. And I'm going to make the noise kind of a fire color here. You can see that's going to work pretty well. And I'm going to jump out and go down to Opacity. And this is the setting that most people forget about. I'm going to set a fall off amount on this. Now, as you can see right here, if I render this the way that it is, whoops, if I apply it, there we go. If I render this, it makes bubbles. The inside are actually hollow on this. I'm just going to swap these. So I grab one and move it and hit swap. And now it's made the outside fade. But when I render this, it's still going to look pretty solid. And that's because I've got a solid, or a solid line here that's dictating the curve. That's the fall off. So the middle is 100%. The edge is 0. What I want to do is put another, I'm going to click on point, click on down here and add another point. This is the same thing that we did with the deformations um, when we were making lofts. So now I've moved this point. You can see up here it's changed the falloff. I'm going to right-click on this and hit Bezier Smooth. 
and just smooth this out a little bit and you'll see that up here I can get a really nice fade now and when I render this it'll look a little bit more like fire when I render it. Now I'm not real happy with those colors so I'm going to jump back over to my noise I'm going to change the colors. Right now it's a little too bright, I think. I'm going to try and play with these colors a little bit. I don't really like this red in here. Uh, maybe something like that. That's too yellow. That's too orange. That's a little better. And the size of my noise is too big. Now yours might be different. Remember size on these noise settings ha is different for every scene. I also clicked fractal. You can click turbulence. I may like turbulence better. I think I'm going to go with turbulence. And I'm going to knock the noise size down to 10. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it a little bit more varied in here playing with these settings to see which one I like better. I think I'm going to go back to that one. I went back to the regular noise type setting. And the size I'm going to bump down to 5. And I think that's going to give me a little bit more variation in here which will work a little bit better. I'm going to push my red back up too. And we'll go with something like that. Okay. Now I can change different things once it's in there. So the size right now is a little bit too small for me. You'll see when I bump this up that now I'm getting a little bit more fuzziness around the edges when I make it bigger, but it's too solid. So now it's just solid and it doesn't really look right to me. So that means too many particles if it's solid. And I'm going to jump down here, and if I can find where it was, it's actually up. It's too many particles. It's a percentage. It's right here. And I'm going to knock the percentage of particles down. And now when I render it, I get a little bit less particles. Actually, I'm not getting too many less particles there. Bump it down to about 45. Yeah, a little bit better. Well, I don't want to take too much more time just for this tutorial, but um, drop my variation down, drop the size down a little bit. This will change it a little bit. That's a little bit better, I think. So that will help me. Also, I'm going to go back over to my material, go back up to the very top of the tree. Uh, Self-illumination needs to be on, and so does two-sided. Let me see what that does. That's going to make it look a little bit more solid. And I think in my case I'm going to leave that. But I'm going to bump the size up even more. There we go. I think that's going to look a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit cloudier. And I'm going to go back into my maps under opacity and I'm going to play with this setting here and what I want is I want this to really fall off more so that it's not so solid right in there. There we go. Add another point. I'm going to have that cut off a little bit earlier. You can see now I've got a little bit more kind of fuzziness to that. And it should look, yeah, it's going to look a little bit more transparent now when it renders. I'll let that render all the way through. Uh, my noise size is way too small right now, too. So I'm going to go back up to noise, and the size is too small. I think I'm going to go back with maybe like a 12 setting. And I'm looking for these little dots. I want them to be bigger, actually. That's still too small. I think I was closer with the 25 that I started with. I think I like that a little bit better. There we go. And you can see the dots basically are bigger in here. I think I like that better. Okay, I'll let that render all the way down. Okay. 
Now the next step we're going to do is just add a little bit of ambient detail to it. We're going to add a light down by the base of it that animates. Fire looks a lot better when it's kind of got blinking lights and making it look like it's interacting with its environment a little bit more. Right now that bottom base would just kind of sit there. I'm also going to play around one more time with this percentage. I really want less particles in there. See if this does it for me. No. Okay. I'm just changing some settings here to uh, get a little bit better look to this fire. This is fairly normal with um, a particle system like this, is to have to go back and forth and change it. And I'm kind of looking at each render just to see what's changed here. I think I'll go with that. Okay, now I'm going to add a light, an Omni light. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And the Omni light's going to sit right down here by the base. I'm going to make sure that it's not sitting in the floor, but you can see it right there. Raise it up a little bit. And right now my Omni light is orange. I'm going to make the multiplier 1. You can see it's sitting right there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the beginning here. Turn on Auto Key, and I'm going to... Every couple frames, I'm just going to move this. And you can see that it's animated. You can see that light moving on and off. And I'm just going to randomly change the setting of this light. And you really don't have to worry about whether it's too bright or not. It's going to be animating. So as long as Auto Key is on, um, it'll record these changes. I forgot what frame we're going to now. Let's see when these particles stop here. I think they stop around 80. Yeah, they stop about 80. So, now you can see that that light is flickering down there. I'm going to turn off Auto Key. I'm going to grab a few frames, and holding down Shift and left mouse dragging, I'm going to just copy a few more frames, and this will make that, that uh, fire or that light really frantic, and you can see it down there just like it's blinking with fire on, okay? And the nice thing about these particle emitters is if I animate this emitter, so I'm going to go to Auto Key, and I'm just going to, do I have the emitter? There, there's the emitter. I'm just going to move this emitter over to the side, and you'll see that it sprays out to the side, and at the end of my animation, with Auto Key on, I'm going to move it around to the other side. And can you see that kind of whipping effect that it does? It does that automatically. So here's my animation now as it kind of whips across. And Particle uh, Super Spray will do that for you. I'm going to turn off Auto Key. And uh, if you don't want these particles lasting so long, that's the life. I'm going to leave them lasting a long time, even though they're just going to be kind of hanging out there. Um, I'm going to move my viewport around just a bit, and you can really see that kind of whipping around that it's going to do. Okay, I'm going to render this out. It's going to take too long. You can play with the Super Spray and um, see what you can come up with.